Hey there! Today we're going to talk about some of the big prophets, who are a special group of people that God picked to carry his message to his people. There are lots of prophets in the Bible, but I want to talk about three of them today. Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel. Being a prophet is a really special job. God comes to you and gives you a message, and then tells you to take it to his people. I want to talk a little bit about that job today. First of all, how did these guys get that job? Each one of them was called by God. God said, I have a job for you. In Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah tells how he was called by God to be a prophet. Can you imagine looking up and seeing the throne of God and God is sitting right in front of you with all the angels there? Isaiah was scared because he knew that he was just a regular person. And like everyone else, he'd made mistakes. And so when he saw that he was standing before God, he said, Oh no, my mouth isn't clean enough to be standing before God. But you know what? God had a plan for Isaiah's mouth. And so an angel flew down holding a hot coal, and he touched that coal to Isaiah's mouth, and it cleaned his mouth. All of his past mistakes were burned away. And just then, Isaiah heard the Lord say, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? The Lord had a special job, and he needed someone to go speak for him. And Isaiah said, Here am I, send me. Isaiah was ready to do God's work as soon as he heard the Lord ask, especially now that he'd been cleaned and his lips were clean and ready to carry the message of the Lord. That's a pretty exciting story. And Isaiah served as a prophet for the Lord for many, many years, through many kings. Later, another man came along, and his name was Jeremiah. One day, the Lord spoke to Jeremiah. God said, I have a job for you. In fact, I knew I had this job for you since before you were born. Jeremiah, though, was a little bit nervous about taking this job. Jeremiah said, I'm too young to be a prophet. I don't have the experience or knowledge or wisdom but the Lord knew that Jeremiah could do it. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Sounds kind of like Isaiah, doesn't it? God reached out and put the words in Jeremiah's mouth. And so Jeremiah went to do a really, really hard job. He had to speak to the people at the worst time of Judah's history. It was through the very last kings as the people were going into exile and Babylon was coming and taking them all away. In fact, Jeremiah was there when the city of Jerusalem was destroyed and when all the people went away in bondage to Babylon. In the middle of that time, there was a man who was with the people in Babylon. His name was Ezekiel and he was also called by God to speak to those people who had been taken away into a different country. One day, he looked up and he saw this amazing vision of these angels and God and all of these spinning wheels and amazing things that he could hardly understand. He says, So when I saw it, I fell on my face and I heard a voice of one speaking. Guess who it is? It's God. And so God sent Ezekiel to talk to those people in exile, even though they had been very stubborn and refused to listen to God all this time. And then... He reaches out his hand and gives Ezekiel a scroll or a book, and it's full of his message for the people. And then he says, Ezekiel, eat this scroll. That seems kind of funny, doesn't it, to eat a book? And so Ezekiel obeyed, and he ate the book. And it was like honey and sweetness, he says. This was a vision given by God. Sometimes the prophets had visions. A vision is something that you see that may not be real, but it helps you to understand something. What Ezekiel was supposed to understand here is that God was putting his word inside of Ezekiel so that Ezekiel could carry it to the people. Just like God touched the mouth of Jeremiah, God put the words inside of Ezekiel. Wow, what cool stories. So once they had the word of God inside them, then they could go tell that word to all the people. But that doesn't mean it was a fun job. In fact, most of the time, it was very hard. 
Have you ever tried to tell something to someone and they didn't want to listen to you, even though it was really important? That's what happened to all of these prophets. Jeremiah tried to tell all the people and nobody ever listened to him. In fact, they got so angry at him that one time they took him and threw him into a dried out well. He might have died down there, but there was one good servant of the king's who asked to be able to pull him out and put him in a safe place. And even the king didn't listen to Jeremiah. Sometimes he listened to his words, but he never did what Jeremiah told him to do. Ezekiel had a hard time too, but God told him, you keep speaking my words even if it's hard. God called Ezekiel his watchman. Do you know what a watchman is? It's somebody who stands up there and watches to make sure that things are safe. Like if you're at the pool and there's a lifeguard up there watching to make sure everybody's safe. Ezekiel is a watchman to let the people know when bad things are happening or when they're doing bad things. God said, your job is a watchman. So when you see bad things happening, when I give you a message to tell the people something bad's going to happen because of your sin, you tell the people. And if you tell them and they don't listen to you, that's their fault. But if you don't tell them and so they don't hear it and they keep doing wrong, Whose fault is that? That's the fault of the watchman. And so Ezekiel had a really big responsibility. That doesn't mean that everything God had to say was really bad or sad. A lot of times God told the people messages of hope. Although the people had done a lot wrong and they needed to be warned so that they would change, God also sent messages of the wonderful things that would happen someday when they turned around. God sent a vision to Ezekiel of a big pile of bones. And when Ezekiel was looking at the big pile of bones, the Lord asked him, can these bones live again? And Ezekiel said, I don't know, Lord, you know. And so all of a sudden the bones begin to move and come together and they joined up and made bodies. And then the, the bodies grew back and there was a whole bunch of people standing there. But they still weren't alive yet until the breath of the Lord came back and brought them back to life. That was a message to the people. The people had died inside not really died on the outside, they didn't, their, their bodies didn't die, but they were dying in their hearts, in their spirits, because they no longer believed in God, they no longer trusted God, and so they had a spiritual death. Even though they were dead inside, they could still be brought back to God, but only by turning to Him and the life that He gives could they come back. Being a prophet was a really big, really hard job. They got to do a lot of exciting things. They got to tell a lot of exciting stories. Most of the time it was very hard and very sad because a lot of people didn't listen. But that didn't matter because the message came from God. Do you know you've been called to carry God's message as well? It's not quite the same as a prophet because God isn't going to come down and touch your mouth, but he did give you his words and he gave you his gospel and he gave you a call. In Mark chapter 16, verse 15, Jesus says to all of his followers, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The gospel is the message of Jesus, that Jesus came and died for our sins and that he was buried and raised again. And since you've been given that good news, that good message, you need to carry it to all the people you meet. Say, here am I, God, I'll go out and tell people about Jesus. And like Ezekiel, I will watch out and see who needs the gospel and bring it to them so that they will have the word. And even if people don't listen, like they didn't listen to Jeremiah, I'll still do what's right. So that's the story of Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel. Don't forget to keep trusting God and listening to his word.